And good afternoon and welcome to St. Julie for the celebration of the Sacrament of Confirmation. We especially extend a very warm welcome to the Most Reverend Louis Tilka, co-agitator Bishop of Peoria, who will preside at this liturgy, and the Master of Ceremonies, Martin Nyberg. The concelebrants will be our pastor, Father Tirso Villaverde, and our associate pastor, Father Tone Wynn, and Deacon Ed will assist. The music for the occasion will be led by our music director, Sue Clemens. Also, we invite you to consider making a donation towards the upgrade of the technology used in reaching out to our young people. There's a basket at the baptismal font for that purpose. Finally, we'd like to, we'd like to remind you to silence your cell phones and please refrain from taking photos during the celebration of the sacrament. We invite you now to please center yourselves as we begin this celebration. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. With it's good to be back with you here at St. Julie, uh, coming home, it feels like, a place that has been 
uh, a big part of my life for the last six years, but uh, as I have been called to and moved on to new ministry now as a bishop, uh, it still feels good to be coming back to this faith community, celebrating the fact that the Holy Spirit is alive and well in the church, especially as we prepare to uh, so offer the sacrament of confirmation to these young people. Uh, an outpouring of the Spirit continues to lead us and to guide us in our call of discipleship. And so as we prepare ourselves to enter into these saving mysteries, let us first acknowledge our sin, calling upon God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you've shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of truth. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty and merciful God, that the Holy Spirit coming near and dwelling graciously within us may make of us a perfect temple of his glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, 
to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. For I, the Lord, love justice. I will faithfully give them their recompense, an everlasting covenant I will make with them. The word of the Lord. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption through which we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if only we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had grown up and went, according to his custom, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He enrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recover recovery of sight to the blind, and to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today this scripture will be fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Candidates for confirmation, please stand. Bishop Lou, I am pleased to present to you the candidates from St. Julie Parish. Father Tirso, have they been prepared and are they ready to receive this sacrament? These candidates have prepared for confirmation by participating in the sacramental life of the Church, by meditating on the Word of God, by attending religious religion classes, by participating in a re- retreat and other activities, and by demonstrating Christian service. They have found strength in God's grace and support in our community's prayer and example. Now, they ask to be confirmed, and after consultation with their teachers and parents, I testify that they are ready. My dear sponsors, the Christian life and the demands that flow from the sacraments are not to be taken lightly. Therefore, before granting these candidates their request to receive the sacrament of confirmation, It is important that the Church also hear the testimony of their sponsors who have journeyed with them. Are these candidates ready to be confirmed today? And I ask you, my brothers and sisters in this assembly, should these, our brothers and sisters, be confirmed today? So, my dear candidates, your pastor, your sponsors, families, and fellow parishioners, have testified on your behalf. Are you ready now to receive the sacrament of confirmation? (laughs) Yes, I hope. Let us acknowledge and congratulate those to be confirmed. You may be seated. It is a great joy and privilege to be with you now for my second confirmation. Uh, We had confirmation at 10 o'clock this morning for another group, which was my first confirmation as a bishop. I have been a bishop for two weeks and two days. (laughs) Thank you. It's, uh, it's still taking some getting used to. Uh, I'm not used to being called bishop. I'm not used to being wearing all of this stuff. Uh, I'm used to a chasuble on that, but the, the funny hats and the cross and the ring and all that uh, still takes some getting used to. I'm thankful that uh, our seminarian, Martin, came back to help uh, as an MC. You know, many, many years ago when I was in the seminary, I was an uh, MC for Bishop Gorman. And so I learned when he had to put the hat on and take the hat off and when he needs the crozier and stuff and that. But long after I uh, finished in the seminary, I forgot all of that. And so uh, now that I need to do that, I'm thankful that there are seminarians and others around who do come with us from time to time to help us 
uh, as bishops. The other reality is, as I think back, um, you know, I've been a priest for 24 and a half years almost uh, with Father Tirso. We're classmates. I don't know if you know that. Uh, but um, I think back to all these 24 years of being a priest as an associate and for 16 of those years as a pastor, uh, as well as the, the times that uh, uh, I went with Bishop Gorman and filled in with several of the other bishops. I've been to probably at least 100 plus confirmations over the years, and I always complained about how long the bishop talked. <laughs> and now here I am. Also, the bishops used to always ask questions, right? Do you want questions? No, nobody wants questions. But it is good to come and celebrate this gift of the Holy Spirit. And that's really what we're here for. And as I was preparing to uh, uh, be with you today and reflecting upon this moment in your life, in the life of the church, uh, in particular here at St. Julie, um, I was thinking honestly back to just those two weeks and two days ago when I was ordained a bishop. You see, part of the life of the church is using these wonderful symbols that the church has used since it began, and they are symbols that remind us of God's providence and grace in our lives. And so one of the very powerful symbols that is used in the sacrament of confirmation, as well in the other sacraments of the church, is the laying on of hands, the imposition of hands. And so in a few moments when we actually get into the rite of confirmation, I will extend my hands over our confirmandi along with the other priest, calling down the gift of the Holy Spirit in this moment of grace. This is not the first time that that has happened to you or for you. In fact, the laying on of hands takes place in the sacrament of our baptism, it takes place when a priest is ordained and two weeks ago when I was ordained a bishop. It takes place every time we celebrate the Mass as the priest extends his hands over the gifts of bread and wine, calling down the Spirit so that the Spirit may change and transform us. Bread and wine becoming the very body and blood of Christ. And I was thinking back to those two weeks ago when in the ordination ceremony, it came time for the imposition of hands, and I knelt down, and Cardinal Supich, who was the principal consecrator, came forward, and he imposed his hands on my head. He says nothing in that moment. There is a prayer that takes place afterwards, but in that moment, there's no words prescribed. The symbol itself is enough. And after Cardinal Supich raised his hands and stepped back, then came Archbishop Christoph Pierre, the papal nuncio, and he stepped forward and he did the exact same thing. And then the other, you have to have two consecrators along the principal, so the other consecrator was Archbishop Listecki from Milwaukee, a friend, a former teacher, and a connection here to St. Julie. His sister is a parishioner right here at St. Julie's. So he came forward and imposed his hands, and then all the other bishops that were there, there were like 18 bishops there. And for me, in that moment, I was drawn back to the moment of being ordained a priest, when literally over 100 priests, do you remember that, Tirso? <laughs> came and imposed hands on us. And it's just a powerful movement of the Spirit, and I could feel that in my heart. I could feel that God's love for me was active and that this gift of the Spirit was being renewed. Because in all honesty, this is not a moment in your life where you're finally going to get the gift of the Holy Spirit. No, you've had the Holy Spirit with you from the moment that you were conceived. For the Spirit is the animator of life itself. And so you have had this gift of the Spirit growing in your heart and in your life ever since your life began. But this is just one moment where we are confirming the reality that you live. And in confirming the reality that you live, you are pledging that you want to live further into this reality. You want to move deeper in to the knowledge that the Spirit is your helper and guide. You want to live your life more fully 
for Jesus as his disciple. The gifts are there, but in this moment is being manifested in a new way so that you have a greater understanding and appreciation of your calling as a disciple of Jesus. For the gift of the Spirit continues to lead us and guide us. The gift of the Spirit continues to give us the breath of life so that we can live for Jesus. And that's why it's a powerful moment. It is, again, a recognition that God is already with you, but it is this confirmation of how you want to live your life with Jesus going forward. This willingness, this desire. You know, to be honest with you, quite often we mistakenly think of confirmation as being like graduation. We kind of think we've gone through our eight years of catechism, so thank you, Lord. I'm very grateful for this gift you're giving to me, and so now I can just move on and go live my life. Perhaps not even thinking about again how much you need the gift of the Spirit until future moments, like, oh, I think I might get married, so maybe I should come back to the church for that. Or the day you have your own children and you think, well, mom and dad got me baptized, so maybe I should do that for my kids. No, it's not an end. It is a beginning. It is a new moment of moving forward into the life that you are being confirmed. Confirmed in your beliefs, confirmed in your dedication, confirmed that the Spirit is alive and wants to be a part of your life. That's why it is always a great moment in the life of a parish, in the life of the church, to celebrate this sacrament, to be able to look at you and say, yes, you are ready. You have developed a better understanding of this calling of life to follow the Lord, to walk with Jesus, and how powerful it is to once again be made more aware of the gifts you have been given by the life of the grace and the grace of the Holy Spirit. You know, this is my second confirmation as a bishop. I know that uh, as a bishop, this is one of the great tasks and privileges that is going to be now a part of my life for the rest of my years, to go from parish to parish and to celebrate this moment of grace in the lives of so many young people. And I am so grateful for that calling and that privilege. Because I think back to just two weeks ago and two days, how I felt yet again that the power of the Spirit is a grace that has been given to me and that I've been trying to live that for all the 50 years of my life thus far. But it's also a commitment that I want to move further and deeper into that appreciation, that life, that grace of allowing the Spirit to be my helper and guide, now as a bishop. And my prayer for you is that not only in this moment of grace, on this day, do you feel that power of the Spirit with you, but that every day you can radically depend upon this gift calling upon it for the help you need, for the challenge you need, for the encouragement you need, so that each day of your life you can be the good and faithful disciple that Jesus wants you to be. I'd ask that just the confirmandi please stand. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so let us now renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? 
Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who came upon the apostles at Pentecost and today is given to you sacramentally in confirmation? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. This is the point where we use that ancient symbol of imposing hands upon you. So I invite the priest to please stand and join me in this prayer. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God the Almighty Father for these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his, through his anointing conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence through Christ our Lord. Amen. Elizabeth, be sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you.
nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my pain is undone in your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here come fly this place and fill the air Atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close no thing can compare your our living hope your presence I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts
My sisters and brothers, let us humbly now pray to God, the Almighty Father, and be of one mind in our prayer, just as faith, hope, and charity, which proceed from his Holy Spirit, are one. For these sons and daughters of God, confirmed by the gift of the Spirit, that they give witness to Christ by the lives built on faith and love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For their parents and godparents who lead them in faith, that by word and example they may always encourage them to follow the ways of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Church of God, in union with Francis our Pope, Blaise our Bishop, Bishop Lou, and all the bishops, that God, who gathers, gathers us together by the Holy Spirit, may help us grow in the unity of faith and love until the, his Son returns in glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the people of every race and nation, that they may acknowledge the one God as Father, and in, and in the bond of common brotherhood seek his kingdom, which is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, our Father, you sent your Holy Spirit upon the apostles, and through them and their successors you give the Spirit to your people. May his work begun at Pentecost continue to grow in the hearts of all who believe. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands and the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive in your mercy, O Lord, the prayers of your servants, and grant that, being conformed more perfectly to your Son, they may grow steadily in bearing witness to him, 
as they share in the memorial of his redemption by which he gained for us your Holy Spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. And therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all of our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, you make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, the Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Julie Billiard, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and place our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember also, Lord, your servants reborn in baptism, whom you have been pleased to confirm by bestowing the Holy Spirit 
and in your mercy, keep safe in them your grace. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Taught by our Savior and prompted now by the Spirit, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. And for the sake of safety, we ask that you offer a nod or a bow to some of those around you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For safety purposes, and to protect all receiving, we are only able to offer Holy Communion on the hands. As you come forth for Holy Communion, please do so at the instruction of the greeter assigned to your section. The communion ministers will distribute to sections two, four, and five first, and then sections one and three. As you exit your pew, please exit to your right and return to your left. 
we ask that you maintain the six foot safety distance and sanitize your hands before receiving the body of Christ. We appreciate your help in providing a safe worship space for all.
And let us pray. Accompany with your blessing from this day forward, O Lord, those who have been anointed with the Holy Spirit and nourished by the sacrament of your Son, so that with all trials overcome, they may gladden your church by their holiness and through their works and their charity, foster her growth in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If I can ask everyone but the candidates to be seated. Candid or confirm the newly confirmed, please remain standing. Everyone else, please be seated. Now, for just a second, for just a moment, I ask our newly confirmed to remove their masks. All right. Good. The reason why I'm asking you to remove your masks is so that I can recognize your faces because just as Bishop Lou mentioned, this is, not the, this is not the end of your journey. This is not a graduation because your, spirit, your journey and the spiritual life does not end until you are standing before the throne of God. Okay? And so I want to see the faces of those who are going to be eventually recruited by me and or by Father Tone to be the new leaders of the parish. So becoming lectors, Eucharistic ministers, even perhaps if I, if, I, if I form a parish council, that you will serve on the parish council. I see some Filipino faces as well. So those who might be recruited to help plan the Simbangabi and other Filipino celebrations for the parish, possibly even learning dances like the tinikling. See how good you are with dancing through the bamboo sticks. And so I just wanted to see your faces so that I can recognize who you are, so that I can put you to work. <laughs> because again, like Bishop Lou said, this is not the end, this is just the beginning. And so if you have been confirmed now and fully initiated into the life of the church, it means that you are fully initiated to becoming full and active and involved members, not, uh, not just, of, the, not just of, the, uh, of, the, of this parish, your spiritual home, but the universal church as well. Now, can, uh, Conf Confirmandi, please put your masks back on and please be seated. Now, during the pandemic, because, uh, because confirmations were postponed, Technically the, uh, technically, the cardinal had given pastors the delegation to confirm young candidates because uh, confirmation in these cases are always reserved to the bishop. But because of the, because of the pandemic and everything, uh, given, every, everything going off course, pastors were given the opportunity to be the ones to, to confirm young candidates. But of course, as I got here, I did not know you. In fact, it was a very good and a very opportune that we were able to schedule a convenient time when Bishop Lou could come here and be the one to confirm you. Because when he, when he asked me, Father Tirso, are these candidates ready to be confirmed? I really wanted to say, how should I know? You were their pastor, you should know. <laughs> okay? So, but as Bishop, uh, Bishop Lou mentioned, he and I have been classmates for since we were in second year college. So we've known each other about 33, 34 years. If it's 33 years, then that means it's the same amount of years as Jesus was alive he, because he was crucified at, at age 33. Not saying that that's going to happen to either one of us, but that's, a, that's a somewhat, sometimes the connection. But again, I thank you, candidate Confirmandi, for your witness, for your willingness to accept the responsibility of being a fully initiated member of the, uh, of the Catholic Church. I thank Bishop Lou for coming back here and, confirm, and being the one to confirm you. I, I thank the, Pat Kamek, all of the catechists, and especially Father Tone him as well, for having been the ones to help form you and shape you into the young, young, young disciples that you are today. 
I thank our music ministers for, uh, for joining us and, and, so, and help allowing us to pray through music and song. And again, thank you to the parents and the sponsors because you are the primary and secondary teachers of our faith to these children. I oftentimes tell parents that no matter what, me, what I say to, to, to young children in terms of their, their, their formation in the faith, if they don't see it at home, then it doesn't matter what I say, because they're going to learn from your example. And so I want to encourage parents and, and godparents as well to keep doing what you are doing and keep being that, that faithful teacher of our faith to, your, uh, to, your, uh, to our young children so that, again, uh, what we celebrated today will continue to be reinforced in the days ahead. So again, I just want to thank you because, by the way, if you, since I haven't really met most of you or, and you haven't, most of you have not really met me yet, I am Father Tirso. I am the new, the new pastor here at St. Julie's. Of course, obviously, I took over for Bishop Lou when he, when he left, and then it just turned out that, his, uh, that we as classmates just, I took over for a classmate, okay? Again, thank you to everybody, and again, please continue to live out your faith in every way possible. Thank you. And I thank uh, Father Tirso for his uh, stepping in and being pastor of St. Julie. When, when uh, he was named uh, as the pastor, uh, he sent a picture uh, that was taken of us on our ordination day in 1996. Uh, we stood next to each other when uh, we were ordained priests by Cardinal Bernadine at the time. Uh, and when I looked at that picture which he sent, I thought, boy, we looked pretty young back then. <laughs> Uh, but we have known each other for uh, a long, long time, uh, from our college seminary days, uh, obviously up to now. And, and so uh, I, I'm grateful for Father Tirso's leadership and his willingness to come to this wonderful parish and, and now lead you as, uh, as pastor. Um, it is good to come back and be with you, and I, I know that this will not be my last visit to uh, St. Julie. It just worked out that... Uh, uh, you know, this was a date on the calendar that we could schedule and, and celebrate confirmation, uh, and I look forward to coming back uh, many times in the years to come. Uh, Peoria is a wonderful place uh, with wonderful people in the midst of a lot of corn and soybeans. Uh, so Father Tone is literally into gardening. I keep telling him, if you come be a priest in Peoria, I can give you a whole farm. <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it's really been a blessing to... Uh, begin to live and to see the wonderful faith that's alive in north central Illinois. Uh, I'm on a uh, welcome tour to the 26 counties that I uh, uh, am now shepherd of that goes all the way from Danville on the east up to uh, Rock Island in the northwest uh, by the Quad Cities. So I cover the whole north central part of uh, the state of Illinois. Someone asked me how big is my new parish and I said it's 16,933 square miles. And it's not one parish, it's 161. So uh, it's a great place, and I'm very blessed uh, that the Lord and Pope Francis has called me to this ministry, uh, especially to this ministry of being able to come and celebrate the Sacrament of Confirmation. So it's been a blessing and a joy to be with you today. The Lord be with you. Bow down. Bow down. May God, the Father Almighty, bless you, whom he has made his adopted sons and daughters, reborn from water and the Holy Spirit, and may he keep you worthy of his fatherly love. Amen. Amen. May his only begotten Son, who promised that the Spirit of truth would abide in his church, bless you and confirm you by his power in the confession of the true faith. Amen. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who kindles the fire of charity in the hearts of disciples, bless you and lead you to blameless and gathered as one into the joy of the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, that of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.